let's talk about Excel's brand new Copilot function, which in essence gives you the full power of AI, all with the flexibility of worksheet formulas. Now, before you get caught up in the hype, I should warn you that it is actually quite useless for about 99% of the work that you currently do in Excel. In this video, I'm gonna show you where Copilot shines, where it falls short, and how it can actually help you solve some problems that used to be impossible in Excel. The truth is that even though Copilot is technically now part of Excel's function library, it's completely different from all the other Excel functions in one critical way. You see, traditional Excel functions like sum, like xlookup, like if, are deterministic, which means that given the same set of inputs, they will always return the same exact outputs. There's zero randomness involved. But the Copilot function, because it's generative AI, is probabilistic, which means that even if you feed it the same exact input every time, it can generate completely different outputs. So if you need precise, repeatable results, like you would with most tasks in Excel, well then this new Copilot function isn't the move. But where its true power lies, it's in its ability to understand and work with open-ended logic and with unstructured data like text. You see, in the past, natural language tasks like sentiment analysis, like text generation, like text categorization used to require complex programming and specialized data science skills. But now with the Copilot function and with the power of AI, this stuff is easier than ever and within anyone's reach. So let's fire up Excel and let me walk you through some examples using real customer reviews from a clothing brand. So here in Excel, you'll see that we've got 20 reviews for what is actually a knit top product. We've got the rating for each review and whether the customer would actually recommend that product or not. Now, if you take a look at the actual review text for these, you'll see that some of them are actually quite long and it really just goes to show how hard it can be to analyze text data like this inside of a spreadsheet format. Now, the good news is that we have the copilot function now. So let's put that to the test. And let's start by getting the sentiment for each one of these reviews. I'm going to launch the copilot function, and you'll see that the arguments are actually split into pairs. So first you've got the prompt, which is essentially what you're going to ask the AI model to solve. And the second is reserved for any context that you need to give that prompt based on the data that you have in your workbook. So let's start by just grabbing the sentiment for this first review. So let's say classify the sentiment for this review of a knit top. Close the quotation marks because this is all text, comma over to the context, and this is the review that we're talking about. Close that out, press enter, and you'll see that we get a mixed sentiment for this one. And what we can do is actually just apply this down, and you'll see that it's going to calculate the sentiment for all of the reviews. When I do that, you'll notice that it has to calculate each one of the formulas separately. That's perfectly fine, but the problem is that Copilot actually has rate limits now, which means that I think you can only do 100 calls every 10 minutes. And the problem with that is that, well, if we had had 100 rows or 101, well, then we would have been maxed out pretty quickly. But the good news is that you can actually use Excel's dynamic spill functionality in these. So if I delete these, let's modify this prompt and let's say classify the sentiment for these reviews say for each of these reviews of a knit top. And let's just, for the context, provide all of the reviews. Press enter. You'll see that the formula is going to spill. This is a single function call of the copilot function. And we still get the sentiment for all of these. So you'll see we've got some mixed sentiment, some negative, and some positive. And you might be thinking, well, that's easy. We've got the ratings right here, right? So we can just use those to classify the sentiment. And that's fair enough, but this isn't even actually considering this. The thing about the copilot function is that the only data from the workbook that it's going to be able to use and have access to is the data that you actually provide as part of the context. So if I were to delete this column altogether, you'll see that the sentiment is exactly the same because it's just gathering it from analyzing the text data in each of these reviews. So if we didn't have the benefit of having that rating column, then this actually becomes very, very useful. Next up, let's see if 
we can get some categories or some themes that we can extract from these reviews so that we can say, all right, well, this has a negative sentiment, but what part of the product didn't they like without having to read the full review for each one? Let's just call this category. Okay, let's launch the copilot function. And for the prompt, let's say something like classify each of these reviews of a knit top into five categories. And let's say that we want those to be relevant to clothing. Clothing. Close the prompt, point it at our reviews for context. And let's see what we get. Now, immediately, you'll see one of the problems that I've been having with the Copilot function lately, which is that the context that we fed it was 20 reviews, right? We said that we wanted to classify each of the reviews, but it actually spilled 21 rows. So at some point, I either returned two for a single review, and that's why they kind of went over, or it just becomes hard to trust what the output is. Now, one thing that I've found is helpful in solving this is just to change the prompt a little bit, just to see if Copilot can kind of recalculate and then return what you were expecting. So let's maybe say classify each of these reviews. Let's remove of a knit top into five categories relevant to clothing. Press enter. We're still getting an extra one. Let's just say into five unique categories. Remove relevant to clothing. Press enter. And there we go. So that seems to be working. We've got fit and sizing, size and material, quality and durability. And it looks like we're really only getting four. That's fair enough, right? So what we can do now is maybe filter just for negative reviews. And we'll see that the fit and sizing seems to be an issue, as does the quality and durability for these. Let's take a look at this one. So the sweater material was fragile. Already two picks in the fabric when it arrived. So definitely relating to the quality and the durability and definitely a negative sentiment. So now that we were able to extract the sentiment and we were able to label some of these reviews, let's see if we can get Copilot to summarize these reviews into smaller blurbs so that they're easier for us to absorb. So I'm just going to call this one summary. Again, let's use Copilot. And let's say summarize the main takeaways from each of these reviews. And let's just say into under 50 characters so that they're not too long. Into 50 characters or less. Again, let's provide the context of the reviews. Pose that out. Press enter. We're getting the right dimension on the spilled array. And now it's a lot easier to gauge where that sentiment is coming from, right? This was mixed because it is a nice fabric, but it's got poor fit for a short height. So it's about fit and sizing. Again, soft fabric, but too roomy. Pleasantly surprised. So these are all positive. Go to this negative one. Fragile material, poor shaping, which again has to do with the quality and the durability. Now for the final demo here, let's take advantage of Copilot's ability to generate text. Because while it may not seem like 20 reviews is a lot, and even though we have now gained all this new information for these reviews, it can still take quite some time to come up with some actions to take as the maybe product manufacturer to improve the product. So let's see if we can use Copilot for that. I'm actually going to do this down here. And let's use Copilot to generate some recommendations on how to improve the product. So let's say using these reviews of a knit top and provide the context. And then we can continue the prompt after that. Let's say make three concise suggestions for improving the product. Close the copilot function. It should spill those three recommendations. We can see them right here. So we want to improve the fabric durability to prevent snagging and pilling for longer lasting wear. We want to adjust sizing to fit better to accommodate different body shapes, especially for shorter and broader frames. And finally, enhance the shaping and tailoring to create a more flattering silhouette and avoid a boxy appearance.
And there you have it, some pretty incredible examples of what you can accomplish with the new Copilot function in Excel. Now again, it absolutely won't replace the need for traditional Excel formulas, but it does represent a brand new tool for accomplishing brand new tasks, which I think is pretty exciting. Before we wrap, I do wanna cover some important caveats with this function. Number one, this is still only available for users on the beta channel and with a Copilot Pro subscription. So chances are you don't have this on your version of Excel yet, but hopefully Microsoft is gonna start rolling this out to more users pretty soon. Number two, there is the rate limit of 100 Copilot functions every 10 minutes. So make sure you leverage the spill functionality whenever possible. And finally, caveat number three, honestly, it's functionality still a little bit less than ideal. You can have timeouts if you're working with data sets that are too large. You can have excessive spills like we saw in today's demo. And in general, you can just get inconsistent results. But let me know, what do you think? Do you think this Copilot function is just hype or is it actually going to be useful? Drop us a comment below with your thoughts or with any other use cases that you might have for this function or that you'd like us to explore. As always, thank you for watching and make sure to like and subscribe for more data content just like this.